بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم لا حول ولا قوة الا بالله العلی العظیم الحمد لله رب العالمین و صلی الله علی سیدنا و نبینا ابو القاسم المصطفى محمد و آله الطیبین الطاهرین لا سیما بقیت الله فی الارضین عجل الله تعالى فرجه الشریف و جعلنا من اعوانه و انصاره اللهم اخرجني من ظلمات الفهم واكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا ابواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين ان شاء الله you had very blessed months of ramadan and i pray that your actions in this month especially in laylatul qadr will be accepted by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have tawfiq to resume our weekly uh, lectures. As you remember, uh, we have uh, the last part of the section on khawf remaining. Inshallah, bi'iznillah, from next week, we start discussion about ar to be pleased with Allah's decrees. In this part of the section about Khawf, uh, the main discussion is about Su al Aqibah. What can be a bad ending, bad fate for our lives? What makes believers to be worried and to have positive fear? about Su al Since we have only one session because we want to start a new topic, uh, so instead of uh, studying from Mahajjatul Bayda, which is many pages, I will uh, study a summary version of it by the late Mullah Muhsan Faith, the same author of Mahajjatul Bayda, in his book al Haqaiq, which is the last book he compiled during his life when he was about 84 years old. Uh, so he has four pages about this and it has the main points of al Mahajjatul Bayda. So he says that al Faslu Sadis. Asbabu Su al Khatima, it's from page 170. It says the reasons for having bad end are three. All the reasons finally can be reduced to three. First of all, it is something that does not happen without reason. Yeah, it's not that by chance someone has husn al and someone has su al Nothing happens in this world by chance, especially when it comes to uh, Allah's way of treating us, Allah's way of rewarding or punishing. Nothing is by chance. If there are people who have good ending or bad ending, there must be a reason. Now, what are those three major reasons for Su'ul Aqiba or Su'ul Khatima? Aqiba and Khatima means ending. The first, Amma Sababul Awal wa Huwal A'adham. The first, which is the greatest cause, is that when you are just going to depart when the fears of death appear either doubt or shack may happen or juhud or enkar denial so if when i'm dying I doubt my faith, I doubt my belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
or I deny na'uzubillah, which is worse than doubting, then if I die with that condition, this is su'ul aqba. And then my soul would be deprived of having good encounter with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the extent that Mullah Mohsen says وَذَلَكَ يَقْتَذِي الْبُعْدَ الدَّائِمِ So I would be eternally far from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But why some people may doubt just at the end? Why some people may deny just at the end? We are not talking about the people who have always had doubt and they didn't bother. We are not talking about people who have been always denying and they didn't bother. No. We are talking about the people that had faith superficially and still they didn't manage to keep it. This is our concern. He says the reason is that sometimes people believe in something about God's essence or attributes or actions which is not true. أَنْ يَعْتَقِدَ الرَّجُولِ فِي ذَاتِ اللَّهِ وَصِفَاتِهِ وَأَفْعَالِهِ خِلَافَ الْحَقِّ Something which is not true. Why? إِمَّا بِرَعْيِهِ وَمَعْقُولِهِ Either according to his own opinion, you know, he has developed some ideas, especially he has, if he has a little bit of studies or, you know, readings, sometimes, you know, permits himself that, you know, I can develop my own ideas. وَإِمَّا بِالتَّقْلِيدِ Or has been imitating, has been not following, uh, you know, it's better to say imitating because uh, if it is following based on reason, that's good. But just taking what other people say who are not qualified, maybe they are famous, maybe they are, I don't know, uh, followed by some people, but they are not qualified. So this person has developed ideas about Allah's essence or attributes or actions, which are not true. At the time of death, when truth becomes clear, when it's, uh, according to Mullah Mohsen, is the time of casual ghita, when the veil is removed, they see that that idea or those ideas were false. Then the whole faith system or belief system collapses. When at the time of death, when you don't have that much time to study, to distinguish between what is right, what is wrong, if your faith proves to be wrong or your aqidah becomes wrong, then even other things you may lose faith in them. So he says, If in this condition, dangerous condition, he dies before he manages to return and, you know, restore, then he may have bad ending. And he says, with respect to this particular reason, we can say people who know their limits and they don't engage with unnecessary theoretical, theological, philosophical, mystical discussions. They are safe. There are people that they just try to know what is needed because they know that they are not qualified for that. They are humble, they are therefore safe. But people who want to know everything about everything and, you know, they want to develop ideas about everything, they want to, you know, present themselves as someone, you know, who has deep knowledge, etc. Therefore, they are at more risk. And he says, unfortunately, many people have no deep knowledge and they just develop ideas based on the way they are brought up 
on the ideas that they have been receiving from, I don't know, family, environment, etc. Or some of the teachers they have had. And then over time you will be very attached to them, especially if they suit your you know, worldly interest. So it's better to know your limits. And unless you are you are one of those people that Allah has given them deep understanding of faith. They have ability to interpret. They have, you know, light of wisdom in their heart. It's better not to undertake too much. Those things which are necessary, you must know. And also base your uh, aqidah on reliable scholars, reliable sources, and for details, leave it. Say whatever is in the knowledge of Allah correct, I will accept. So, this is one reason. So, doubt or denial just before death of some of the beliefs, which then co leads to collapsing the whole system. Number two, and this is ضعفل iman, the weakness of faith. Why faith is weak? Mainly, it's because of hubbut dunya. You may think it's mainly because of lacking knowledge. Yes, lacking knowledge is important but if there is no hope with dunya why you don't learn why you don't you know attach uh, you know yourself to learning and you know studying reflecting praying it's all because of hope with dunya hope with dunya by itself is poisonous plus it stops us from other things you know imagine if there is a poison that is affecting you, but also damages your appetite. So you don't want to eat any good food. You don't want to drink anything, you know. You should, you know, take, for example, some, I don't know, juice. You have to take, you know, some meat. This poison doesn't let you have any appetite. Hubbu dunya is like this. Hubbu dunya doesn't let us enjoy religious life. Unless... It's superficial and helps us with hubbud dunya. Sometimes, you know, superficial religious life can even make dunya f more enjoyable for us. But if it is a real religious life, it's in conflict with hubbud dunya. So, مَهْمَا ذَعُفَ الْإِيمَانِ ذَعُفَ حُبُّ اللَّهِ وَقَوِيَ حُبُّ الدُّنْيَا Whenever Iman is weaker, love for God is weaker, and love for dunya is stronger. So it reaches the point that no place remains in the heart for Hubbullah. Yes, he says, I love God. There is such hadith or nafs, he says, but it has no impact. Everyone says, you know, I love Allah. But if it doesn't change your life, if it doesn't, you know, bring any kind of, you know, positive change, and you are like people who have no such love, then it's just superficial. And when this hubbut dunya is there, then hubbullah is weak, then little by little, Heart becomes dark and hard. Yudlim al qal becomes Muslim. Muslim means uh, from zalam, zulma means dark. Wayaksu becomes hard. And little by little, the light of Iman might be extinguished. When death comes, this is during the life. When death comes to such person, may Allah save us from this. What happens? A person who has lo excessive love for dunya, very weak faith, 
now this means he is losing everything that he loves فَرَاقُ الدُّنْيَا Separation from dunya. What is dunya for this person? Everything. يَا الْمَحْبُوبَةَ الْغَالِبَةَ عَلَى الْقَلْبِ Is the beloved of this person which is dominant over the heart. So this person becomes very sad. Whatever you have achieved. You know, when you love something, even if you are, for example, uh, going to be away from Temporarily, for example, your home, your library, I don't know, your car, your garden, your, I don't know, business. If you are going to be away, you feel sad, but you have hope that you go back. But if you know that there is no way for you to go back, and you are going to see them for the last time, so you will be very, very deeply sad. فَيَتَعَلَّمُ الْقَلْبِ Alam بِالْحَمْزَ With Hamza means pain. The heart will be full of pain because of sensing استشعار فراقها Sensing separation. And another point is this وَيَرَى ذَلِكَ مِنَ اللَّهِ And then think that Allah is taking all this from me. This is the game of shaitan. Instead of saying that I knew that one day I'm going to lose these things, I shouldn't have, you know, put all my love and trust in them. Alhamdulillah that I have Allah, I'm going to my main, at least if not the only, my main, you know, beloved, my main ideal. Instead of that, shaitan says, Allah is taking all these things from you. If he wanted, he could have saved you. He wants you to suffer, he do, or he doesn't at least bother about you. Shaitan tries to make this a weapon against faith of this person. فَيَخْتَلِجُ زَمِيرُهُ بِإِنْكَارِ مَا قَدَّرَ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُوتِ He says, why, you know, there should be death? Why God decided this? And therefore, yukhsha. There is fear that buqdullah, dislike for Allah, can take the place of hubbullah, because hubb was very weak. And if he dies at that time, it's terrible. But if he had greater love for Allah, then he is more safe. In the Quran, you know, we have this uh, very important ayah, ayah 24 of Surah Tawbah. قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ آبَاؤُكُمْ وَأَبْنَاؤُكُمْ وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ وَعَشِيرَتُكُمْ وَأَمْوَالٌ اِقْتَرَفْتُمُوهَا وتجارة تخشون كسادها ومساكن ترضونها أحب إليكم من الله ورسوله وجهاد في سبيله فتربصوا حتى يأتي الله بأمر Tell them if your fathers, children, brothers, spouses, family, أشيرة Money that you have collected and what? Your business that you are always worried about this business being going to decline, etc. Or the houses that you are very pleased with. If they are dearer to you, lovable to you, more lovable to you than Allah and His Messenger and Jihad and Fisabila, wait, expect Fatarabbasu, expect something, an affair from God comes, means a catastrophe, a tragedy, a calamity may happen. Allah here doesn't say you must not love these things. He says, if you love them more than God and the messenger and jihad, you have to be worried. 
Awliya Allah. They only love God. And they love other things under God. For sure they love their fathers, children, brothers, family. Even they love their house, they love, you know, money that Allah has given them. But they love them under God. These are blessings of Allah. We love blessings of Allah. But under God. Therefore, in Dua Ya Arafah, Imam Hussein salam says something like this. Antalladhi azalta al-aghyar an qulub ahibbaik or awliyaik hatta lam yuhibbu sawaak. You removed others from the hearts of your friends so that they don't love anyone other than you. Meaning anything is under Allah. For example, you love Rasulullah, of course, but under Allah. You love Imams, under. You mu'minin, human beings, but under. Not above, not next. Ayah is talking about the minimum. At least, if you love other things independent from God, at least your love for God must be more. So that if you have some time to choose, at the time of jihad, for example, you have to choose between God and the messenger and your business, your children. If you have to make such a choice, then choose Allah because your love for Allah must be more. Okay? So, Shaitan says to us, you are losing everything that you love. If your love for Allah was greater during the life, you would not be affected. So I always loved. I was happy in dunya to give my, you know, money, my house, whatever, for the sake of Allah. I was happy. Now, if he wants, I lose them, no problem. But if you had more love for them, now you have difficulty. May Allah save us. So this is the second cause. So the fir I repeat, the first cause was to lose your Iman because of doubting, of denying. And I said, the reason is more not having a strong and true Aqidah. The second is dha'ful Iman, weakness of Iman because of strength in dunya. Hubbul dunya is very strong. Hubbullah was weak. Therefore, now you are going to be separated, distanced from what you love. It's very painful. And you may now dislike Allah at the very critical time, which is the time of death. The third issue for Su'ul Khatima or Aqiba is Kathratul Ma'asi. Please listen carefully. Kathratul Ma'asi wa in al Iman. There are people that they have a strong faith. In what sense? In the sense that they have no doubt about God or the Prophet or Imams. Even, for example, if you go deep to their hearts, you see they have great attachment to. Rasulullah, they have attachment to Imam Hussein, to Lady Fatima. They really love them. They really have faith in them. It's impossible for them to doubt them. But unfortunately, they have not been careful about sins sometimes. It's possible. And this can lead to one day these scenes become so strong and so, you know, effective that that strong Iman becomes very weak, becomes, at least you can say, unable to help. So he says, 
اما سبب و ثالث و کثرت المعاصی و این قوی الایمان ایون اف ایمان واز استرانگ این دیس سنس دیت دی دیدن هاف اینی داوت و ذالک لان مقارفت المعاصی سببها غلبه الشهوات وای people commit sins because their lower desires overray becomes dominant and then with developing habits it becomes stronger and stronger now at the time of death all these accumulated shahawat lower desires come an attack so this person then would be in a very difficult situation to die with proper love for Allah sins should not be ignored little by little they take away our faith he says in general if during your life you had more inclination toward ta'a then at the time of death what comes to you to your mind is mostly ta'a but if during the life your most uh, most of your inclination and desires was towards masiya then at the time of death also they come to you so we have to be very worried that maybe our soul will be taken while shahawat has become too much in control too much at least you know in power and therefore what happens is that we become mahjub we become deprived of you know encounter with allah we would be wailed then he compares these two dreams what do you normally dream he says an al insan yara fi manamihi jumlatan min al ahwal allati ahidaha tul umrih normally what you dream is some of the things that during your life you have been used to so what you have been seeing and thinking and doing when you were awake normally at the time of dreaming you would see them when we are going to die also it's similar what we have been doing and thinking during our life they would come to us we would have a at the time of you know separation of the soul you know you are going to have a quick review of these things that you have been used to even some people say you know they had a review of the old life but for sure those things which have been you know, repeated a lot you have been used to they would be more dominant so now it's very dangerous if these things were bad things if they were you know sins so he says if you want to make sure that your memories at the time of leaving this world at the time of departure if you want to make sure that your memories are clear from sins and shahawat fala tariqa lahu illa al mujahada tul al umr fi fitam nafsihi anha fitam fatima is also from the same root means to save to protect to keep away the only way to keep your memory safe from these things is that throughout your life you need to struggle by taking your nafs away from this shahawat and maasi this much is under your control if it just occurs it's not going to 
affect too much but if you have been you know accustomed to these things it will remain that's the problem and the one of the key points to remember is people die as they lived so your life determines how you die and you will be resurrected as you died we say كَمَا تَعِيشُونَ تَمُوتُونَ وَكَمَا تَمُوتُونَ تُبْعَثُونَ as you live you die so death is a summary is an overall result of your life and then death determines how you are going to be resurrected so that's very critical time um, the late Mullah Mohsen Faiz says that there was a baqal someone had grocery shop at the time of death people were doing talqeen Shahadatain, you know, was being said to them so that he repeats. Instead of saying Shahadatain, he was saying Khamsa, Sitta, Arba'a. Because so we have to be very careful when we have time. If we have a pious life, moral life, if we have muraqaba, then at the end inshallah we'll be all right with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but if you have been careless we must be worried that these carelessness might might reach its peak at that time and may, we may lose many things at that time and therefore he says because of this of course this is one of the reasons martyrdom is very pleasant and unexpected death is very difficult shahada is very pleasant why because normally if someone is martyred because he was seeking martyrdom for example, he says, you know, he has gone to the battlefield. He has prepared himself psychologically, mentally, he's ready for death. Why? Because of hope Allah. Because he wants seeking his pleasure. He wants to sell himself to God. Surah Tawbah, verse 111. So, when with this mindset, this attitude, you go and then you are martyred. So you have husn al Plus martyrdom itself helps, but even prior to martyrdom, this person is in very good, you know, shape and form spiritually. But if it is mawtul fuj'ah, unexpected death you are not ready maybe na'udhu when you were forgetful maybe you were sinning you were doing something wrong or especially na'udhu billah na'udhu billah if you are doing zulm you die that would be terrible so we need to be living such a life that if we die unexpectedly we would be safe so, this is a positive concern. Concern or fear or khawf about Su'ul Aqibah. Of course, every fear and hope, as we have said, they are healthy if they help us to be become better. If you become depressed, hopeless despaired no means it has become extreme but 
if this kind of year helps you to be more alert to do more good things to do muraqaba more to help you know uh, people instead of doing job etc so do lots of good to yourself and others this is very healthy and this should be the situation okay with this discussion alhamdulillah we had hosnul aqiba for our course inshallah allah gives us hosnul aqiba for our life inshallah and the izn allah from uh, next monday inshallah we will start discussion about ar-rida inshallah alhamdulillah rabbil alamin